Okay. So yeah, our keynote today is at 1 p.m. It's a little, it's in the middle of the day instead of the morning. Um, so just wanted to point that out. And our keynote is Danielle Citron. She's uh, um, a professor at University of Virginia at the law school, and she's an expert in privacy. Um, her, she's written several books on it, and her talk today will be on the fight for privacy. So really excited about it. Make sure you join us at 1 p.m. And if you miss a, a session and you can't come to the keynote um, or, or other sessions, uh, the recordings will all be available um, in several places. We'll be putting them on our YouTube channel. Um, they'll be on Sketch, and uh, we'll email everyone as well, letting them know when the recordings are available. And also today we have all of our slides on Sketch, so you just need to click on a session and um, the slides should be there if you'd like to follow along. All right, so we have some really exciting NC Live gear. Um, this year we got uh, sunglasses. Those were our new uh, gear for this year. And then of course we have some um, other gear. Our famous socks are still available in the Argyle and NC Live logo pattern. And we have our tumbler, um, our cerulean blue tumbler, and then our planter. So we'll be doing two raffle drawings right now um, to see who the lucky winners are to win uh, some bag. So I'm going to um, try to exit out of this slideshow. All right, I wanted to share my screen so you could see the, um, the raffle drawing in progress. So we've put all of our raffle names into um, this raffle random raffle drawer. Um, so I'm just gonna press start and it should give me two names. All right, so our two names are Lenita Williams and Heather Martin. So uh, we will be emailing Lenita and Heather and congratulations, you won our NC Live raffle drawing. All right, and that concludes my portion of NC Live Logistics. So I will now be uh, handing it over to Rob. All right, thanks, Claire. And congrats to the winners of the raffle. Every year we we try to spice it up with some new swag. So we hope that you, you like what we have this year. Um, all right, so yeah, so I'm the executive director of NC Live. And I'm just gonna go basically and, and do a, a year in review. Um, I think I do a lot of, like, I know I do a lot of sessions that give an overview of all of the NC Live resources and services that are available. And so I'm hoping that most of you have heard that by now. So I don't wanna repeat myself. So I thought this time I'll just sort of talk about what's happened in the last 12 months in case you missed it. And I'll just sort of touch on a few of our core services at the end. All right, so to get going, I just want to remind everybody of our mission, which is to help you all, uh, every North Carolina library, better support education, enhance economic development, and improve the quality of life of all North Carolinians. Um, I always uh, put this in my slide decks because I just want to remind everyone that this is really the breadth of NT Live. Um, most folks think of us as the folks that provide e-resources or a website service or a discovery service. Um, but really, we have a very broad um, edict here. And so if you have any ideas of things that we could or should be doing to help you, um, if it fits into this mission, which is pretty broad, please let us know. Um, I would say 90% of what we do started because someone said, I need help with this, or could NC Live you know, do something about this? Um, and so we get all of our ideas from you all. So please don't be shy. If you have any challenges, you don't have to have a business plan. <laughs> just, just you know, I need help with this, or wouldn't it be wouldn't it be great if we could do something at the state level um, to support you know X, Y, and Z? So don't be shy. Uh, send us your ideas. That's my that's my takeaway for here. All right. So some basics. We are a membership cooperative. So we are here to serve you all, and um, we're hosted at NC State University here in Raleigh. We've been here for 25 years and we support four communities of interest, the UNC system libraries, the um, community college libraries of North Carolina, 
the independent four-year colleges and universities of North Carolina and the public libraries in the state. So altogether, it's now up to 209 libraries that we serve. All right, so in terms of content, we have over 1.6 billion things. And um, things encompasses everything from full text articles to streaming videos, to digitized newspapers, to eBooks, uh, audiobooks, et cetera. So it's a huge collection. And kind of thinking back to the breadth of our membership, it's nice that we can offer this to everybody. So no matter who you are, doesn't matter if you're a public library or an academic, doesn't matter if you're in uh, an urban area or a rural area or something in between, um, every library has access to everything from NC Live. Um, so for patrons, this is great. It doesn't matter where you live or what, what the tax revenue is like in your county. Um, you know, your library can, your physical library might be really small, but as long as you have a library card, you also have access to this huge collection of content. So we're, we're proud of this, and this is something that isn't the case in all states. Um, so again, as you're promoting NC Live to your patrons, you know, please do remind them that all of this information is at their fingertips. As long as they can get to the internet, whether it's from home or the library, they have access to the entire collection. All right, so to purchase that content, we have um, an annual spend of about three and a half million on content. And we always ask our vendors, you know, if, if our 209 libraries were to buy this on their own, how much would that cost? And the rate would be just under 48 million. So you can see we get these really tremendous savings when we, um, when we negotiate as a block, you know, when we negotiate as a state entity. And so this is really the bang for the buck. Um, and it really shows the power of cooperation across, across 200 institutions. All right, so I wanted to talk, of, speaking of sort of the year in review, um, that content that I just mentioned, it's revisited every three years. So we call it the resource cycle. I'm sure you've probably heard this term at some point, but we have a committee called the Resource Advisory Committee that um, assesses every three years, you know, what resources should we keep and renew for another three years? What resources should we drop? Maybe they're not being used or the vendor, you know, isn't giving us the, the level of service that we need. And then what new resources should we add to the, to the suite of resources? So this, this process takes about 18 months in total. Um, and so our committee has recently wrapped up their recommendations and I'll talk about those in just a second. But first I wanted to, to make sure that you're all aware that um, you know, we do get feedback from everybody. Uh, we put out um, a survey and I think we leave it up for about three months and really anybody who works at an NC Live member library can respond. You can see here in this last cycle, we had about 650 folks uh, fill out the survey and tell us, you know, what resources should we keep? What resources should we look into? What resources should we drop? So that, that data really drives what the committee does. So they took your feedback and sorry, I'm not progressing as smoothly as I'd like. All right, so they took um, your feedback and then they started to assess. So we always prioritize the things that you, you talk about the most. We look at data to see what's being used. We look at cost per use, you know, so, so sort of that relationship between what we pay and how often it's used. And we always try to purchase things that are of value to all of our communities. So all four sectors get some value out of it. So you can see we're, we're kind of here between May and August and the, the resource committee has already made their recommendations. We had a board meeting last Tuesday where those recommendations were approved. So really this summer is when um, we'll be working with our legal folks to sign all the contracts make sure that you know, we're, we're negotiating uh, positive terms for you all, you know, um, making sure that, that you have access to the content in a way that's um, useful, things like accessibility. We wanna make sure that we hold the vendors, vendors to a standard of accessibility. So that'll all happen this summer. And the big takeaway is that we'll announce any changes in August. So look for a communication around that in August. I think there's a chance we might uh, finish that task early this year, but but that's me being optimistic. So just count on August and we'll all be happy if it happens sooner than that. So speaking of content, we also sort of outside the resource cycle have a, a, a collection of ebooks called the homegrown content. And these are ebooks that we purchase from vendors that are located in North Carolina. 
So this has been, I think, going on for about nine years. I think we've been doing this. And all of it is funded through a pledge drive. So really, it's the generosity of you all to contribute to this that makes this possible. So last year, we collected just under $40,000 from you. And we we're able to use that money to add 340 ebooks and a couple of audiobooks as well. So that'll get our homegrown collection up to 5,000 ebooks. Uh, we are adding a new publisher called Red Hawk Publishing, which is run out of a community college here in North Carolina. Um, and then you can see the other publishers that we purchased from below. Um, a couple of unique things about the homegrown collection these are permanent ebooks. So uh, they're never going to go away. Uh, we purchased them outright, they'll always be with us. And two, and maybe even more exciting, these are unlimited simultaneous use books. So um, if you're a public library and you have, you know, um, a reading a book club or a summer reading program, a hundred, a thousand people can be reading the same novel at the same time. You'll, they'll never encounter a hold. They'll never encounter a wait list. So that's really exciting. And for academics, you know, these books can be used in course reserves as well. So you can have an entire class or multiple sections of the class looking at it. Um, unlike most ebooks, folks will never encounter an access barrier. So that's that's exciting. Also, speaking of homegrown, we um, came to the realization that in our state, the most popular ebook platform, especially for public libraries, is Overdrive. And up until now, our homegrown books have not been on Overdrive. They've been on another platform called Biblioboard. So um, we had the epiphany that we should try to get them onto the Overdrive platform. So we are. So that's the news. Um, public libraries have been very excited about this. Um, I think to date, you know, these books have been on maybe the third platform that a patron might look at, you know, after Overdrive and Hoopla, folks might make their way to, to Biblioboard, but that's a really big ask, you know, people have platform fatigue. So we're going to add the most uh, popular 3000 titles this summer, and then we'll add the rest next summer. Um, and then as we purchase new titles every year, we'll just make sure they end up on the Overdrive platform. So this work is happening right now behind the scenes. And um, we will announce next month some instructions um, if you want to add these to your, your OverDrive uh, platform. Uh, we won't force these books on you. I mean, in case, you know, if you decide you don't want them, that's fine. But um, once they're available, we'll put out the word and give you some instructions on how to make them accessible in your platform. So hopefully that's exciting, especially to folks that use OverDrive as their main platform. Um, some other good news, we, NC Live was awarded an LSTA grant for half a million, and um, this money is being used to purchase some additional permanent ebooks, uh, also unlimited simultaneous use. And you can see the breakdown here. Um, in terms of numbers, most of these titles are JSTOR uh, titles. So we'll have a JSTOR collection that you'll see soon. Um, we're shooting for July. I think that's a date we're pretty confident on. Um, I, I suppose there could be a snag, but I think we're well on our way to, to making these available. And you could see, in addition to JSTOR, we were able to add a few titles, I shouldn't say a few, a handful of titles in um, topics like health and then DEIA. So um, we're happy to, to add titles that we thought, you know, the committee thought would be useful to, to all of our COIs. So that's all good news. And thank you to the State Library for the grant. Um, okay, some other things um, sort of along the, the access route, we realized that, you know, we're serving such a large population of library patrons who are, you know, primarily Spanish speakers, we thought it would make sense for us to have some sort of Spanish translation on our website. So we did some research, this was the website advisory committee's uh, work. And we, we sort of looked at best practices here and figured out that we don't need to necessarily translate the whole web page, which would be pretty costly and, and maybe not super useful. But um, really, it's the resources page where we need the most translation. So um, you can see that we've, uh, this is live now, but we've gone ahead and added a Spanish translation button to the browse resources page. So I know this is just a snippet, but you can go there now or after the presentation and see what it looks like. We um, wanted to, to make sure that this was available so that folks you know, looking for a resource didn't get stuck. And of course, we do have a lot of resources that are in Spanish. So that you know, it'd be, it'd be a shame if the only barrier was our little resources page, right? Being only in English. So we're excited now we can, we can make this available to folks. 
So anyway, check it out. It's there. And please feel free to promote this to your users. All right, so we have another program, um, and this is called Maximize Your NC Live eResources. This is Claire's pet project. Um, but really, the idea of this is that you know we have a lot of libraries that use some of NC Live. You know, they might use our content but not our services, or they might you know use some of our collections but not others. And so we're really just inviting you all, if you're interested to let us know if you'd like us to do an assessment of your usage of NC Live. And, you know, we'll try to figure out, um, are there in, are there peer institutions that are maybe using resources that you are not? Because that might point us to like a marketing opportunity. So maybe you just need to promote a particular resource. Um, or, you know, maybe it's not resources, maybe it's your website. You know, maybe we're seeing overall low usage for NC Live. And then we might look at your website and say, oh, I know why. It's because NC Live is buried on the fifth page, you know, that patrons are probably never finding. And so we might make a recommendation on placement of, of the NC Live link. Um, so anyway, we have lots of custom recommendations based on the assessment that we do. And so if you're interested, whether it's increasing usage of resources, improving user experience, or just um, you know, boosting how you market to your patrons, uh, you can sign up. The, the link is at the bottom. It's nclive.org slash maximize. And again, we'll, we'll schedule a date. We'll go ahead and in advance, we'll look at what you're currently doing, and then we'll make some recommendations on, on what you might think about doing differently. And like all advice, take it or leave it. But so far, we've had a lot of, of happy customers. Um, so yeah, we're happy. We want you to get the most out of this uh, cooperative as you can. So if we can find ways for you to get more value out of it, then that's that's in everybody's interest. All right, so um, you are now doing professional development. That's why you're here today. So the annual conference is definitely our big signature event, but I wanna just remind you that we have professional development all year round. And Devin is really, uh, Devin works with the CTAC, the Continuing Education and Training Advisory Committee, um, to put together programming that's relevant to you. So we do a lot of surveying, we do a lot of asking librarians, you know, what are some skills you want to build? What are some, some topics that are of interest? I, we've just highlighted three that are coming up. Um, I think the one on the bottom right um, is the uh, sort of chat GPT, uh, you know, topic that everyone seems to be talking about. So we're going to look at that from a librarian perspective and what it means to us. But yeah, we have all of these training sessions, most virtual. We do have some in person as well. And last year, we had almost 19,000 attendees um, of, of at least one of our sessions. So it's really exciting to see that. And I should also mention, whether it's in person or virtual, all of these training opportunities are free. So we never charge uh, you all, the member libraries, for this stuff. So again, we're excited to offer it. and. We're, we're grateful for all the volunteers, like today's pre presenters, who are willing to share their expertise um, to you all for free. So we, we are grateful and it's very much in the, in the spirit of librarianship. Um, last year, we had a very popular accessibility learning series. We had four virtual sessions on different aspects of accessibility. We had over 400 folks attend. Um, I mentioned this even though it's already happened because the recordings are available. So if accessibility is of interest and maybe you missed these sessions, um, please do check out our YouTube channel and you can view these. Another new um, offering, I guess, is an orientation course. So we just launched this last, last Monday, I think. And this is a self-paced uh, tutorial if you or someone at your library doesn't know much about NC Live and just wants to get like the basics. Um, again, this is self-paced, so you can share it with a new employee, even your student assistants, if that makes sense, for their roles. But yeah, they can kind of walk through step-by-step, step, what is NC Live, what does it offer, how do I use it, et cetera. So we're excited about this. And um, again, this is on our website if you would like to give it a try. Some more upcoming professional development. These are... Um, these are two, well, two in person and one online. So I mentioned in the middle the, the impact of chat GPT, but also some more um, traditionally interesting topics. Uh, project planning, we have a session here in person at the Hunt Library, June 22nd, and then grant writing, which is always relevant. And that's September 22nd at the High Point Museum. And you can see some of the names here of the folks that are facilitating. You know, we're, we're really lucky to attract experts who are willing to share. So I encourage you all to take advantage of these if they're of interest. 
All right, so I promised I wouldn't do my normal spiel, so I'm just going to do it in one slide and just remind you that in addition to content, which is which is kind of the it of NC Live, we also offer a discovery service that makes the it easy to find. We offer a proxy service that makes it easy to log in, a library website service that makes it easy for your patrons to navigate, and then we also do some search engine marketing on your behalf. So that's where we create Google ads for library content. So someone who's searching the open web, not really thinking about libraries, might type in something like, you know, learn Spanish for free, and that would trigger an ad from NC Live, and we would direct them to our language learning service. And then they could either log in if they have a library card, or, or we give them a 10-day pass. So they can sign up for a 10-day pass and use one of our resources, and then we'll direct them to their public library for a permanent card. So these are all services that we offer. If any of those sound interesting, like I said, I won't get into the details now, but uh, you can either check out our website for more information or just reach out to us and we'll be happy to explain what's on offer. All right, so this is uh, one of my conflicted updates. Um, we, we have now been offering vendor print materials for over a year. And so the idea here is that, you know, some patrons really want a leave behind, like a brochure, a rack card, a bookmark, something that they can take with them outside the library, and it'll be a reminder to check out a resource or, or it might have information on how to use a particular resource. So we heard um, over the years that folks really missed having physical print materials. So we worked out an arrangement with most of our vendors where you can go to the link below, you can order you know, 50 bookmarks, 100 rack cards of, of different resources that are of interest, and then the vendor will ship that to you directly at your library. Again, this is free of charge. So we counted up and it looks like we've had, we've sent out over 114,000 of these. Um, I said conflicted because, um, you know, it is paper, but I guess that's a renewable resource technically. So anyway, it's up to you. If you want to, if you want to order paper, paper is being offered. So there you go. All right. So I think we're doing pretty well on time. So we have about five minutes and I just wanted to leave this up. This is really all the ways you can connect with us. Um, today is hopefully informative, but I know that, you know, certain things evaporate. If you're like me, you, you won't remember 100% of what you, you learned today. So please do engage with us, whether it's on social media or through our listservs. And if ever in doubt or if you have a question or an idea, um, you can always email us at help at nclive.org, and then we'll, we'll route your email to the right person here on the team. So I think that's it. And I wanted to save a couple minutes in case folks had questions. So feel free to use the chat if you want, and we will go ahead and answer questions. And I'm, I'm just scanning the chat. Thank you all for the positive vibes so far. There was a question um, about can alumni utilize NC Live? Um, so it's kind of, I kind of have to answer two ways. Um, anyone in North Carolina, you know, can use NC Live and they do that by getting a library card. So even if they've graduated from university, they could, wherever they live, they can go to their closest public library, get a library card, and then they're golden. They've got access. I think it's it's more challenging when folks graduate and then move out of state. So that, in that case, because they're not here, it's not available to them. But um, so yeah, that's that's sort of the quick answer is, is if they're in the state, their university card won't work, but they can certainly get a free public library card. Oh, and I see Claire answered that. Sorry, I should scroll more. Okay. Any other questions that you all have? All right, well, it is a Monday morning, so I don't blame you. Um, oh, there is a question. Okay, um, so the question is, when we move the eBooks onto OverDrive, um, will they show up in any Libby search or will they be under a separate library in the app? I don't, I'm not 100% sure. Um, Claire might know the answer to this. So I'll invite Claire to jump in if she wants. Um, I, I'm i actually trying to look up my document with the details right now to see if OverDrive ha has sent me those details yet. Um, but if we don't know now, I will certainly ask them and um, we'll get those details. We had another similar question um, 
come to us about whether the homegrown materials would be filterable in overdrive. Um, so I will be asking overdrive those questions and we'll try to get that information out to you um, when we send out the details of the project uh, through email. Yeah, that, that project is is in the home stretch, but we haven't actually, because the books aren't there yet, we're not 100% sure how it will work. Um, you all are probably much better, you're experts on OverDrive. We're, we're actually, it's it's a new platform to us. So we're we're eager to see what it looks like when the content is loaded. But these, yeah, these are good questions. And um, in June, when we, sorry, in July, when we send out the um, information about this, we'll try to include that level of detail. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I hope this got the day off to a good start. And um, we're excited about the programming, and we hope you are, too. Uh, throughout the day, if you think of any questions, feel free to email us, and we'll be happy to, to answer. And thanks again for, for joining. We're excited about the day. So thank you. Thanks, Rob. And thanks, everyone. Um, our next session will start at 10.15. So we'll see you there.